Welcome back friends. So, um, we are going to do Asian American writings today. The other day we have been talking about uh, Indian writings in English as well as uh, post-colonialism and post what is post-colonialism and what are the post-colonial texts. So, that is what we have been doing and today we will be doing Asian American writings particularly with reference to uh, non-fiction as well as fiction, but primarily the novels. I will be giving you a brief introduction to this uh, category of Asian American writings, how did it all start and then as usual there will be a practice test. So, Asian American novels, what are the, what countries do we count or what countries come under the category of Asian American works or Asian American uh, categories. So, uh, we talk about the Chinese people, Indian of course, but Chinese, Japanese, Filipinos, Koreans and of course, various parts of the South Asia. Now, uh, before we start, I wanted to draw your attention to the background. President Lyndon Johnson in 1965, President Lyndon Johnson who succeeded President John F. Kennedy after his assassination and uh, President Lyndon Johnson enacted a law where selection of immigrants, see before that um, immigration process was not all that easy, citizenship was not all that easy to get, but there was a very long period when people did get, people who wanted to go to the United States, some uh, United States of America would get absorbed quite easily relatively speaking. So, um, President Lyndon Johnson decreed that uh, selection of the immigrants would be based on and the, he gave out certain criteria. One is employment preferences and needs. So, if America for instance requires certain categories, people who work in certain professions, those days it used to be doctors and nurses. So, uh, they, uh, the country would give preferences to people who belong to this, uh, these professions. Family reunification, uh, let us assume the husband has been in the United States for a very long time and uh, he wants his family to join him, wife and children or his parents, then yes, family reunification could, was one of the other reasons. And then most importantly, flight from communist countries, peak of the Cold War. Okay, so, this was one period when uh, many people who would fly uh, or who would flee these countries um, would be given uh, citizenship, employment in the USA. Now, this immigration law as you would expect transformed the landscape of the US. Formerly, Asian Americans were considered a national menace. But from the 1960s, the second half of the 1960s onwards, they transformed into a model, they are model citizens. So, if you want to know more about that, you can look up the uh, immigration process and Lyndon Johnson and all the laws, but I just wanted you to give a very brief introduction to this phenomenon. Now, uh, coming to the literature, that is what we are interested in. So, there was a person called a Japanese uh, scholar or a professor, scholar and professor, Yuji Ichioka at UCLA, University of California in Berkeley. He was the, uh, he is credited to establish the first ever Asian American center at UCLA. And uh, this was also, so th that kind of you know brought together people, like minded people who were working in these areas. So, a certain kind of intellectual collaboration started happening at UCLA. So, that was the first place uh, to officially um, institute a program like this, a center like this. And then you have to understand that this is, we are talking about 1968, it was a turbulent era, not just in the US, but also 
in Europe also you must have come across the Paris st student revolution of 1968. So please look up these things you would understand what I am talking about. Now it was called, uh, it was rightly called days of rage, a term given by Todd Gitlin. There were radical developments in US cultural politics and political culture. There are so many things that were happening, counter culture uh, in literature was one major development that was happening, American new wave cinema that gave went to um, extremely uh, uh, you know practices uh, to give went to those practices and those ideas and those attitudes that marked a radical shift from whatever was happening in preceding generations. So, days of rage, people were unsettled and they wanted to cause unsettlement politically, culturally. Politically it was also, uh, this period also started marking the decline of the new left. However, um, there is a section of society that celebrated 1968 as a watershed year in the development of historical self-consciousness among and this is important non-white people. This is a period on one hand which marks the rise of radicalism culturally, politically. This is also a period which marks the rise and growth of self-consciousness among non-white people. The reason was that the mood of the general public started shifting to the public, uh, to the political right, decline of the new left and the rise of the political right, right wing as symbolized by uh, President Richard Nixon and his ideologies. And uh, he famously gave the expression silent majority, okay, that America uh, or uh, majority of the people belong or believe in the ideologies of the conservative right that is silent majority. It also heralded the death of the so called uh, or the so called death of the new left. Now what was happening, what were uh, the far or long term implications of all this? Now, Asian Americans started integrating into this society and there were two important names, Daniel Okamoto and Jade Snow. She was a Chinese, he was a Japanese writer. Now these two writers won mainstream acclaim by accepting a benign form of Americanism through which Asian Americans could enter a mainstream. Now what is mainstream, what is periphery, that is for you to decide. But mainstream means getting um, the kinds of jobs or getting the kinds of uh, you know accommodation uh, uh, where uh, there was no restriction. If you have uh, enough money and merit, you could find an entry into the right kinds of colleges, jobs. Um, residential area. So, that is called mainstream. You are no longer at the margins, but in the mainstream. Now, Jade, uh, Jade Snow Wong, she wrote her autobiographical, The Fifth Chinese Daughter, 1945, which was very well regarded by the US, US government and uh, it was also translated into several languages. The idea was that how Asian Americans should happily integrate themselves with the US society, with the American society. Okimoto wrote an autobiography called American in Disguise. It was a 1971 work and he claimed an affinity between Japanese American and white American identity. It was a sort of uh, a memoir which addresses uh, certain personal questions and viewpoints 
on loyalty to America during the Vietnam War, identity politics, interracial marriage. So, no prizes for guessing that in the during the Vietnam War where the loyalties of the Asian Americans should lie with, although they are of the Asian origin, but if you are an Asian American then your loyalties are supposed to be with the United States and both these people were raised or looked um, at as the poster boy and girl of the US society of the Asian American um, society in the US. Now, another important name at during this period is Frank Chin who wrote a book called IE. Okay. I do not want to pronounce it, but that is the way it is written. You can look it up. Now, Frank Chin, uh, a writer, a political activist, a dramatist, um, he did not like this kind of accommodativeness. He felt that there was a contradiction between America's claim to democracy and its imperial march through Asia. And people like Jade Snow Wong and Daniel Okamoto, they are selling out. They are just ingratiating themselves to uh, the US government. Um, he wrote an essay called 50 years of our whole race and also brought out um, this anthology of Asian American writers it is called IE in 1974 where he challenges the notion that Asian Americans suffered from a dual identity complex lashes out against the legacy of white racism and the uh, uh, overall the idea is that Asian American culture is masculine, robust, dynamic as opposed to um, what the uh, what the West has been painting it as feminine and soft. The other day we were talking about orientalism and the binaries. So, please relate these ideas to what Said says in Orientalism. Um, now, this essay, 50 Years of Our Whole Race, uh, it was influenced by the literary manifesto of the black arts movement and the essay was called 50 Years of Our Whole Voice and sort of carries along with the radical claim for an alternative literary tradition and not joining the mainstream. And according to Fra Frank Chin, the Asian American, the alternative uh, literary tradition should uh, be driven by aesthetics, politics and writing should be masculine and ma manly. Manhood and man that were those were the key words to represent the whole of community. Frank Chin also was very angry, he directed his anger at women and fake Asian American writers um, and uh, Asian American women writers responded, um, but uh, that uh, Asian American writing has come to be re regarded as masculine and homophobic. Now, um, for example, if you look at Louis Chu's Eat a Bowl of Tea eat a bowl of tea. Asian Americans responded to or uh, Asian American women responded to Frank Chin, but uh, Asian American literature and writing uh, uh, with the efforts of Frank Chin came to be regarded as masculine and homophobic. This was a period 1957 when someone called John Okada, he wrote a novel called No No Boy in 1957. It is a study of racism in America where there is a boy who is uh, constantly called derogatory, uh, derogatorily as a Jap boy and also he is asked go back to Tokyo, do not live in America. So, all these jibes are taken at him. Uh, he gives the term called strain of Americanism. According to Okada, in America one needs to assent to white supremacy in order to survive. 
In IE, as I have been telling you, Frank Chin criticized the emasculation of Chinese Asian men in the writings as they were represented in the writings of the white people. Ellen Kim, uh, she is a feminist critic and according to her, Asian men are coded as having no sexuality while Asian women have nothing but. That means they have only sexuality and both men and women that is Asian men and women they exist to define the white man's virility and the white man's supreme superiority. Now, this is this was said by someone called Elaine Kim. Asian men have been coded as having no sexuality while Asian women have nothing else. So, that is what uh, she protest again this kind of uh, very lopsided point of view or gender perspective. In 1991, Frank Chin wrote a revised version of IE called the Big IE and he presented selected Chinese and Japanese heroic epics as the sources of the Asian heroic tradition authentic Asian American writing according to him must look back to these heroic tales. So, every country has its national legends and national epics and national heroes and Franklin brought together selections from those writings and presented it as you know kind of the masculine and heroic uh, model to rise up to. So, according to him that Asian American uh, uh, according to him Asian Americans are not uh, um, feminine and soft, but they are heroic and these heroic tales and heroes should be taken as role models. He also denounced writers such as Maxine Hong Kingston, David Henry Wong and Amy Tan for being complicit with the white publishing industry in distorting Asian legends and creating unflattering portraits of Asian men. So, according to Frank Chin, the uh, binary is between real and fake Asian American writing. Now, um, so all these are big ideas, important ideas and we will be uh, um, doing some uh, practice tests also based on that. So, I have just mentioned certain names David Henry Huang and uh, Maxine Hong Kingston, Amy Tan. I would urge you to look up their works also they are important writers from the point of exams. There is another uh, key text which arrived in 1997 a key postmodernist kind of a text called Tropic of Orange. Okay, uh, which is uh, uh, which was written by someone called Karen Tai Yamashita, and it is uh, it belongs to the genre of postmodernism, magic realism. It combines element or elements of magic realism, hip hop culture, um, film noir, etc. It's uh, based in LA, where homeless and gangsters and um, organ sellers and uh, Hollywood stars and producers they all combine. Now, the plot covers just one week, but is uh, epic in scope. There is a traffic accident on the harbor freeway, uh, which is caused when a driver bites an orange containing lethal concentrations of smuggled cocaine. There is a traffic jam, people abandon their cars, the homeless take over the property of uh, um, the rich people they take over the cars and they build up a, uh, an alternative community. And then second theme is relocation of the tropic of cancer itself which uh, begins to move when an orange from a tree growing exactly at the latitude of the tropic of cancer falls to the ground. So, tropic of orange and this is a very interesting take from a Japanese from an Asian American writer. Okay. 
so tropic of orange we also uh, get introduced to someone called archangel now this is again in the tradition of magic realism um, archangel is scheduled scheduled to fight a wrestling match against someone called super nefta and then it is almost like mirroring a fight between north and south america there was another important work called native speaker written by chang re li a korean writer now here the protagonist does not suffer from alienation and this is very important previously all asian americans they have a sense of um, distanciation they are not part of the mainstream despite their achievements and successes but here um, ethnic representations don't really matter uh, the narrator is someone called henry park and uh, he belongs to the so called model minority this is another term so silent majority model minority they live in um, new york center uh, sorry new york city and the problem here is that his english is too perfect and he has lost his language uh, and his privileges have come at the cost of uh, his identity so that's the theme of native speaker so um, we can go on and on about the variety and the wealth of asian american literature and writings in a uh, in historical context in contemporary context and of course we have uh, uh, indians who belong indian american writing and that's another category all together which is also worth exploration and something that is um, doing so well so um i would urge you to go through all those writings and uh, if you are apply, i mean if you are interested in writing essay type questions then yes you will have to do a lot of your readings otherwise this is the overview of asian american writing and uh, also of course there exists a subcategory of indo american writing our own bharati mukherjee from bharati mukherjee to Uh, very recent jampa lahiri and more so now let's move on to do practice test please look at the first slide here read the following now in this novel a character called buzzworm goes on to explain that individuals have their own personal clock that holds past experiences and future endeavors in this personal way time has a different meaning for everyone and as buzzworm suggests it had nothing to do with being on time had to do with a sense of time sense of urgency sense of rhythm cadence sense of history identify the work a tropic of a cancer b mona in the promised land c tropic of orange d my ear of meeps all works of asian american writings and second the novel is set in a texas and mexico b new york and chicago c la and mexico d none of the above number 3 now you see said the turtle drifting back into the pond why it is useless to cry your tears do not wash away your sorrows they feed someone else's joy and that is why you must learn to swallow your own tears So this is what I'll do. I'll gather together my past and look. I will see a thing that has already happened, the pain that cut my spirit loose. I'll hold that pain in my hand until it becomes hard and shiny, more clear. And then my fierceness can come back, my golden side, my black side. I will use this sharp pain to penetrate my daughter's tough skin and cut her tiger is tiger spirit loose she will fight me because this is the nature of two tigers but i will win and give her my spirit because this is the way a mother loves her daughter identify the writer a amy tan b barbara king solver c maxine hong kingston 
D Rampala Hewe. Next one, fourth, uh, the novel is remarkable for its A unreliable narration, B multiple perspectives, C use of slang, D depiction of queer characters. Number 5 is also based on the same passage, the author is also the writer of A the interpreter of maladies, B the bone setter's daughter, C the Pakistani bride, D the woman warrior. Number 6, read the following, what seems to hold Asian American literature together is the popularity among whites of Maxine Hong Kingston's woman warrior, David Henry Huang's FOB and M and Madame Butterfly and Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. These works are held up before us as icons of our pride, symbols of our freedom from the icky gooey evil of Chinese culture. Identify the writer A. Franz Fanon B. Raymond Williams C. Stuart Hall D. Frank Chin Number 7 Identify this writer. The world is divided between those who stay and those who leave. Who said that? Famous quotation from a famous novel. A. Salman Rushdie B. Amy Tan C. Bharati Mukherjee D. Jampa Lahiri Number 8. This author's first novel was typical American. The New York Times recognized the novel as a notable book of the year and it was one of the finalists for the National Book Critics Circle Award. Her second novel, Mona in the Promised Land, derived from her short story, What Means Switch and is a sequel to Typical American. The next book, Who is Irish, is a collection of eight short stories and two stories from the collection were selected for the Best American Short Stories Anthology. John Updike chose Birthmates for the Best American Short Stories of the Century. The love wife departs from the Chang family and focuses on the new American family that consists of multi-ethnic members including Asian, uh, Asian Americans and White American. The, uh, the author published the author published World and Town in 2010 and Tiger Writing, Art, Culture and the Independent Self 2013. Identify the writer A. Gish Jen, B. Amy Tan, C. David Huang, D. Chang Rui Li. Number 9. This is literary criticism and theory. The effect of mimicry on authority of colonial discourse is profound and disturbing for in normalizing the colonial state or subject, the dream of post enlightenment civility alienates its own language of liberty and produces another knowledge of its norms. It is from this area between mimicry and mockery where the reforming civilizing mission is threatened by the displacing gaze of its disciplinary double that my instances of colonial imitation come. What they all share is a discursive process by which the access or slippage produced by the ambi ambivalence of mimicry almost the same but not quite does not merely rupture the discourse but becomes transformed into an uncertainty which fixed the colonial subject as a partial presence. By partial I mean both incomplete and virtual. It is as if the very emergence of the colonial is dependent for its, repre for its representation upon some strategic limitation or prohibition within the authoritative discourse itself. The success of colonial appropriation depends on a proliferation of inappropriate objects that ensure its strategic failure so that mimicry is at once resemblance and menace. Now this is a lengthy passage but look at the key words here mimicry, colonial discourse, slippage, colonial appropriation, resemblance, menace. Now, an ambivalence of mimicry. Now, uh, who is the author? There is uh, who is the literary theorist and 
critic. So, you have to understand certain kinds of uh, terms associated with certain critics and theorists. International exams for English uh, are uh, uh, very fond of giving you such kinds of passages. You may not get exactly the same passage, but some of the concepts you have to know. So, get these things uh, extremely, you know, clear in your minds what terms or which terms are associated with which writers. So, identify the critic and theorist here A. Ellen Kim, B. Homi Baba, C. Gayatri Spivak, D. Ajaz Ahmad. Number 10. In this work, Rene Gallimard becomes infatuated with Song Liling, a Chinese opera singer he believes to be female. Unbeknownst to Gallimard, Liling is a communist operative who has been using him to collect valuable information about the Vietnam War. Eventually, Gallimard loses his position in Vietnam and is sent back to France. Living follows him there to gain more information and is revealed to be male. Identify the writer A. David Henry Huang B. Gish Jen C. Wakako Yamamuchi D. Tim Toyama Number 11. I am not the only man to seek his fortune far from home and certainly I am not the first. Still, there are times I am bewildered by each mile I have travelled, each meal I have eaten, each person I have known, each room in which I have slept. As ordinary as it all appears, there are times when it is beyond my imagination. This writer's work also includes A. Such a long journey B. The inheritance of loss C. The ground beneath her feet D. The third and final continent I am not just asking you to identify the writer but also his or her other works. Next one, number 13. The protagonist here is described as surreptitious B plus student of life, illegal alien, emotional alien, yellow peril, New American, stranger, follower, traitor, spy or so says his wife in the list she writes upon leaving him. Henry is forever uncertain of his place, a, a perpetual outsider looking at American culture from a distance. As a man of two worlds, he is beginning to fear that he has betrayed both and belongs to neither. The work is from A. Native speaker, B. The interpreter, C. Obasan, D. The secret life of bees. Number 14. Read the following again. Literary theory. No one today is purely one thing. Labels like Indian or woman or Muslim or American are not more than starting points which if followed into actual experience for only a moment are quickly left behind. Imperialism consolidated the mixture of cultures and identities on a global scale, but its worst and most paradoxical gift was to allow people to believe that they were only mainly exclusively white or black or western or oriental. Yet just as human beings make their own history, they also make their cultures and ethnic identities. No one can deny the persisting continuities of long traditions, sustained habitations national languages and cultural geographies, but there seems no reason except fear and prejudice to keep insisting on their separation and distinctiveness as if that was all human life was about. Survival in fact is about the connections between things. In Eliot's phrase, reality cannot be deprived of the other echoes that inhabit the garden. It is more rewarding and more difficult to think concretely and sympathetically, contrapuntally about others than only about us. But this also means not trying to rule others, not trying to classify them or put them in hierarchies, above all not constantly reiterating how our culture or country is number one or not number one for that matter. 
So, identify the work A, the empire rights back, B, culture and imperialism, C, the right stuff, D, the subaltern speaks. And number 15, the author also wrote, the author of this particular passage also wrote, A, orientalism, B, arguably, C, black skin, white mass, D, discipline and punishment. And here are your answers. We will go through the answers. So, number 1 is C, Tropic of Orange by Karen Tai Yamashita. Number 2 is C, where is it set? In LA and Mexico. Number 3, that passage about mothers and daughters from Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. So, A. Number 4 is B, The Joy Luck Club is uh, popular or known for multiple perspectives four daughters and several mothers ok. So, uh, uh, and each woman has a chapter to her own. So, a very entertaining and uh, mm, thoughtful novel. <laughs> Number 5 is B, Amy Tan is also the author of The Bone Setter's Daughter. Number 6 is D the passage about David Huang and Amy Tan and Maxine Hong Kingston is by Frank Chin from his Come All Ye Asian American Writers of the Real and the Fake. Number 7 is C, Bharati Mukherjee from her famous novel Jasmine and number 8 is A, Gishjan. Number 9 is B, Homi Bhaba. The, the work is the location of culture. Number 10 is A, David Henry Wong and the story is Madame Butterfly. Number 11 is C, The Interpreter of Maladies by Jampa Lahiri and number 12 is D, Jampa Lahiri the, is also the author of the third, and, the third and Final Continent. Number 13 is A, Native Speaker, the passage is from Native speaker by Chang Rei Li and number 14 is B, Culture and Imperialism by Edward Said and Said as you know is also the author of Orientalism. So, number 15 is A. Thank you very much.